as we do now get underway. There was uh, a taking of the knee just beforehand, which was very well respected by all of those inside Nethermore. There is the Lions to get us underway as they shooting from right to left in this first half in an early throw in. I mean, where was the cabal on the carry man in that, really? When Prince Ek Polo was being hauled to the floor. I'm not sure, but there's a lot more red shirts forward this time. There is indeed. This free kick is taken up towards the right hand side of the penalty area. There's uh, a pull on uh, George Cantrell who goes down. But the ball drifts out and behind for a goal kick anyway. Plenty of bodies in the box. Nicholson with the long throw and towards the penalty spot. A couple of headers away by Kettering. Nothing of major note though as Gratton goes down. LeBrun and Baker though gets into the byline, pulls it back looking for John Fulis who goes down. Is there going to be any opportunity for a penalty here? And instead, a foul goes the other way against George Cantrell. So it was never likely to be a red, but a yellow, well deserved. And a free kick for the Lions. Lewis Hay stood over this one. Looks for Gratton to come short. Towards that back post, and it's decent ball in from Lewis Hay. The referee seen something. Just cleared away, out of play, and the young lad just nods the ball back in. Ball hooked forward. And Misser just about makes a save there. As the Brunnen Becker goes to ground and wins a free kick. Lewis Hayes left foot. So much pushing and shoving in the box though. As the cross does come up towards that post, it clips the top of the crossbar. From a Geisley man. Nicholson, Brad Nicholson there. Ball looped over Jordan Fulis. His shirt was more off him and in the palms of the Kettering defender that was marking him than on his body. Shock horror. And uh, Nicholson there snuck up to the back post and hit the bar. It's risky. Well, they're not sitting in the playoff places for no reason, to be fair. Kettering. Guys are clearing the lines now. Headed forward again by the visitors. Picked it well by Prince Ekpolo, skips inside and plays a really neat ball to Jacob Gratton who's bearing down the 18-yard box. He's likely to get a difficult effort here as he plays a good low ball into the six-yard box. Just cleared away. And then Gertrude are able to knob that ball out to this near side. Who goes out of that far, line, far side. Throw in taken, flicked on by Prince Ekpolo. Now Thewlis, got Lewis Hay in the box. Fewest can't get there, and it rolls agonisingly across the face of goal. A yard or two away from the, that goal line. Nobody in a white shirt to get there, though. Lois Hay was busting a gut to get there, but just couldn't quite make it. Regan Hutchinson knocks that ball forward. A long ball. John Fewest will go and put some pressure on, unsurprisingly. And pathetically, really, Luke Ward goes down. So an actual shot with a player's feet. Not as far as I'm aware. It's rolled across almost the goal line pretty much a few times, but that's about it. Yeah. Now Thewlis trying to turn away from two. He's certainly pulled back. The referee ignores the protest and uh, rather than allowing play to continue, blows for half time. So nil nil at the break here at Nethermore Park. Not a, a, a game to write home about. Bit of a war of attrition at times but it's not going like that. We've had two false starts so far, by the way, for the second half. Actually, three, Chris. I rent, I, I just shambolic. <laughs> but we are back underway, finally. It's in play by Prince. It was going to go out for the corner. Instead, it could get worse for the Lions here as Callum Powell uses too many tricks on that occasion and confuses himself to lose the ball. Now Prince at Polo trying to work well. Puts it to a crowd, but he's giving it away. Now Calder for Kettering on this left-hand side. Picked up by to Kerry Sharif. With a low shot and finds the gut back of the net. The Kettering number nine opens the scoring here at Nethermore Park. With a couple of bat flips for his celebration. He's just picked out that bottom corner and the Lions fall behind. I think the only way I can describe that is jittery panic. There just seems to be a, a fear when the Lions are in possession in their own in their own half and gave the ball back to Kettering. Kettering worked a quick move through and Sheriff took his chance. Again, as much as obviously you've got to praise them for working that move, we really did put that pressure on ourselves then. From the right hand side, the left footed ball and it will be from Nicholson. It needs to be good. Up towards that post, Hollins was up there just over the top of him. 
They scored nine, obviously, last week, and then four again today. Throw in from Mbeka into the chest of Grattan, who gets the ball down. He's under some pressure, puts the ball between the legs of Calder. Mbeka works hard to make something of this. Hutchinson gets in the penalty area. Hutchinson with a snapshot behind wide of the goal. Probably wasn't really going to trouble. Tremendous signing, in my opinion, since he uh, joined. Uh, what would it have been now? Two seasons ago, technically. Yeah. Technically, obviously. I remember him making his debut, I think, away at Darlington. Uh, Geisley win. Now Lamine Sharif back to uh, Luke Ward. A bit of indecisiveness. And Kettering hit the post. Connor Powell. Oh, my God. Callum Powell had the effort there. Cleared away, though, by Jake Cole. Great defending from Jake Cole. But an absolute calamity at the back for the Lions. Ed, it's very, very hard to describe to you what we've just seen. Essentially, the ball's floated across goal. The laws of physics suggest that should have actually gone in. However, it somehow managed to find a way to flick the post. I don't know if that's wind. And we've really got away with one Brad Nicholson there to block the rebound effort there. Corner comes in from Nicholson towards that post. Punched away by the goalkeeper well. Well read. By Absolutely Smith. vital punch by Jackson Smith because otherwise Hollings was there to just pound his head onto it and simple goal. semi-professional heavyweight boxer he's got strength in abundance as it's clear as Jake Day but not even making the bench at the moment and that is that the full-time whistle blows here at Nethermore and it's a disappointing oh, disparaging defeat for the Lions a 2-0 defeat at home so it's a very frustrating result how do you feel about the performance as a whole um, if I'm being completely honest with you I'm not allowed to say right um, how strongly I feel about probably second half performance. Mm -hmm. If I did, I'd get myself into trouble. So whatever I say, times it by a hundred. Right. Um, so I'm just being polite. So yeah, not good enough. We we seem to make um, a number of half chances, but nothing's really dropping and nothing's clear cut. I think we've come up against a team who are determined. They've got some good results, and I think they play. I mean, we've come up. You know, we've played it. We've put it on record. So we're going against full-time professionals. But we always knew today we're going to be a, a good old-fashioned. Conference North game against a team that are aggressive, load of momentum, and I don't think they massively opened us up, but they were more aggressive from 1 to 11, and that's not acceptable. So for me, it just beat us up in a second half when I thought they, if I'm being completely honest, I thought they forced us into submission and they deserved the win. Right. And, and the, the first goal was a, was a, a quality strike, but is it something that, that we could have defended better? Yeah, yeah maybe, yeah, but you know, yeah. we said the same. We, I thought, that especially first half, we got into good areas at yeah. final third. Yeah. Um, and I don't think we make good decisions in final third. I don't think we look like we've got any real craft that's going to open anybody up and score. And they defended their box better. They, they were more aggressive in middle and midfield than final third. I thought they looked more cuter than us, if I'm completely honest. And, you know, they got the goal and they got a second, you know, the second goal. Again, it's, it's more about know-how and, um, you know, as daft as it sounds, I think we've got players wrong side of their defenders, especially first half, that we can get in and there's contact. And not saying they want to cheat, but if it's been the other way around, I know 100% that their lads yeah. with more experience, more guile are going over and, and getting a penalty. And we've got a lot to learn on that performance today. So, you know, I can't beat about Bush and, uh, you know, and dress something up than what, it, than what it isn't. So, like I say, everything that I say, do me a favour, times it by 100. OK. And speaking of uh, craft in midfield um, any news on Andy Kellett's fitness yeah he's a, he's a few weeks away yeah I think he got like a horrendous uh, dislocation yeah. between two bones and he's the, just an innocuous uh, injury but you know he's on the mend despite running 
so hopefully they'll not be too far away. And Jamie Spencer available as well. Yeah, Jamie Spencer's back available now, so he'll give us, hopefully he'll give us some. I mean, it's been a tough one for Jamie. He's been out for six games, and you know what he's like. He wears his heart on his mm. sleeve. He wants to kick every ball, and mm. you know when he's on sideline, he wants to kick every ball as much as it's so nice back now. So hopefully he'll he'll add something to us. And it's going away in the cup next week. I know you're you're a big fan of the cup, so you're looking forward to yeah, that. 100%. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's uh, going to be a tough one again. We, we're there to be to be punched in nose yeah, next week. Yeah. Uh, we're going there as favourites, and they're going to try and smack us on end at, on end at chin and knock us clean out. And we're going to have to go there, and we're going to have to fight our way through. And we're on a no, we're on a no win next week. We've got to go there and win. Uh, if, if 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 we do go there and lose, then obviously it's a big result for them. But if we go there and win, we're ex expected to win. So you know we've got to go and. We need to get through that cup run up by Oko by Krog.